This video is an introduction to WordPress. So what is WordPress? Well, WordPress is an open source content management service, or CMS for short. Basically, it's a free tool that you can build an awesome website with. Now, WordPress started from an existing open source blogging platform called B2. Now, when the creator of B2 was unable to support the program anymore, Matt Mullingweg, in April of 2003, created a new branch of this open source program with the help of his friend Mike Little. Another friend of Matt's, Christine Tremule, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name right, suggested calling the new program WordPress. Well, it sounds like the name stuck. On May 27th of 2003, the first official version, that's WordPress 0.7, was released. January 2004 saw the release of version 1.0, and that's when Matt began naming the releases after jazz greats, the first being Davis. Later on in 2004, we saw the introduction of plugins, which gives WordPress a lot of the power and added functionality that sets it apart from other website builder programs. Now, since WordPress's source code is available for all programmers to work with, you know, because it's an open source program, lots of programmers began creating their own plugins, which fueled the growth of WordPress even more. Now, about this same time, another big player in the blogging platform game named Movable Type decides to change how they run things, and, well, that didn't sit too well with a lot of their users, and after they decided to check out this new kid on the block named WordPress, well, those users decided to jump ship over to WordPress, and that also helped boost WordPress's popularity. Now, in 2005, the theme system and static pages were introduced, and from there on, WordPress has dominated not just the blogging platform, but website creation as a whole, with over 24% of the Internet's websites being a WordPress site. Now, WordPress is constantly updating its code to make it better and more user-friendly, as well as keeping it as secure as possible. And you can see just some of the websites that run on WordPress if you head over to wordpress.org slash showcase. Now, what started off as a program that makes it easy to put online a web log of what is going on in your life has grown into a website building powerhouse that will continue to dominate this market. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on the history of WordPress. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. Now, if you were to do a search on Google for WordPress, the first two results that pop up are WordPress.com and WordPress.org. Well, the first two after the advertisements anyway. So what's the difference between these two besides just them ending in .com for one and .org for the other? Well, there are several minor differences, but the main difference is that with the .com, it hosts the site for you, and with .org, you host the site yourself. So you've got that cost difference. Now, if we head on over to WordPress.com and take a look at some of the pros and cons here, well, the biggest pro is the ease of setup, minimal tech skills involved whatsoever, and zero cost. Also, you get this added security of the HTTPS, that's the SSL that goes along with your WordPress site. Updates and maintenance are all done for you, and you're five steps away from getting your site up and running. Click on the blue button here that says Create Website, fill in a couple of blanks, and you've got your site up and running that quick. Now, some of the cons to WordPress.com is limited themes, limited plugins, which means that you're limited on how your site's going to look and how your site's going to act. In other words, with the themes, that's how your site looks, kind of like a book cover on a book. And with the plugins, those add additional features or functionality to your site. And with WordPress.com, you're limited on both of those. Also, if you're looking to make money with your WordPress site, WordPress.com is not going to work for you because there's zero e-commerce. In other words, you cannot even have AdSense ads. And the URL to your WordPress.com site is going to be using the WordPress.com URL. In other words, it's going to be mysite.wordpress.com or homefinders.wordpress.com. Now, if we head on over to store.wordpress.com slash plans, you can see the items that are offered under the free plan, but you can also see that they have two plans that are going to cost you money. They got the premium $99 a year plan and the features that are offered, and they've got the business plan for $299 a year that you can use for e-commerce purposes.
So you do have those options available to you as well. But if you're looking to spend money and have a WordPress site, I would suggest going with WordPress.org. It's much less expensive and you have more freedom. For example, some of the pros with WordPress.org, you're going to be able to use your own domain. So it's going to be like mysite.com or homefinders.com. Nothing to do with WordPress.org on your domain name. Also, whenever you download WordPress from WordPress.org, you're not only going to get the program itself, but the source code. So if you have some developer type experience or programming chops, then you'll be able to customize WordPress from the ground up. Definitely something you cannot do with WordPress.com. Also, you can use any plugin that you want, any theme that you want. You can do e-commerce any way that you want, which means, yeah, you can run AdSense ads if you want. And since it's on your server and you've got the source code, it's your site. You can even build up your WordPress.org site and turn around and sell it because it's your site. Now, some of the cons is, yeah, you do have that expense of hosting and domain names. Yeah, there are places where you can get free hosting and even free domains for that matter, but these are not recommended for business or professional websites. And that's what we're talking about here, right? Making money. So the biggest difference is the cost and the freedom and flexibility. You do have the expense of the WordPress.org option, but you have freedom and flexibility with WordPress.org. And with the .com, you do not have the expense but you also are lacking the freedom and flexibility. That being said, what I recommend is signing up for both the .com version and regularly posting content on your blog, the .com blog, that is related to the content that you have on your .org site and sprinkle your .org URL throughout your .com site. Anyone reading your post on your .com site, including those search bots from Google, will see those URLs and follow them back to your .org site where you can have your AdSense ads, custom themes, and plugins installed that will allow you to generate the income. So just something to think about there. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on the differences between WordPress.com and WordPress.org. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. A new version of WordPress, version 4.5, is a major update to the popular website builder software. In this video, I'm going to cover some of the more noticeable changes and additions within WordPress version 4.5. Now, I say noticeable because a lot of the changes are under the hood, so to speak, in that they deal with the tweaking of the code to make things run faster and more securely. So let's go ahead and log into our admin section of our WordPress site and check some of these new things out. Now, I've already done that here on this tab. And what we want to do now is come on over here to the left menu and hover over Appearance. And in the flyout, click on Customize. And one of the first additions or changes I want to point out is down here at the bottom. You've got these three icons. These are what's called the Responsive Preview. And over here on the right side, the Preview window, by default, the Desktop Preview is what's selected. And this is what your site will look like on a desktop. And the next tab over, this is what your site will look like on a tablet setup. This prevents you from having to download additional software or make any changes to your browser to see what it looks like. You can do it all from within your WordPress site's customizer section of your admin area. And the last icon here is for smartphone. Awesome. Now, the next addition or change is theme specific. If we come up here to site identity, we've got logo support. Now, I say theme specific because not all themes right now are set up for logo support. But if yours is, it's pretty simply just click on select logo. It brings you to your media library where you can either select an image from your media library or upload one from your desktop. And they give you the suggested image dimensions right here. It's 150 pixels by 150 square. So just add your logo if you like. And let me get out of here. That's going to show up right above your site title. So if you want to include both, Make sure that box here is checked saying display site title and tagline. Otherwise, you can uncheck this and just have your logo showing up there instead. Totally up to you. Personal preference. So I'll get on out of here and leave page. The next change I want to point out is in the WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get editor. And this holds true for both the post editor and the pages editor. If we go into post, go to add new. Let's go ahead and throw in a demonstration title and some demonstration text. 
And what I want to do now is highlight a word or a phrase and come on up here to the format bar and click on insert or edit link. And now you've got this inline link editor, pretty much the same functions, not too hard to figure out how to use it. You just, as it says here, paste in your URL or type to search. So if you want to link to internal pages or posts, like say that default sample page, it's that simple. And then just click on the apply button here and it automatically sets it to that URL. And the other items are a few brand new keyboard shortcuts. If you wrap your text with a single asterisk, that's going to italicize it. Double asterisks will bold it. And if you wrap your text with single quotations, that's going to change it into code formatting. And if you want to see what is currently all the keyboard shortcuts, head on over to codex.wordpress.org slash keyboard underscore shortcuts. And don't forget the capitalization there. And one more item I want to mention while we're in the editor here is another O embed is being supported and that's with Twitter Moments. It's just like embedding a YouTube video URL. If you go to YouTube and grab the URL and just paste it in your editor, then it's automatically going to populate or replace that URL with the actual video. Same thing with Twitter Moments. If you go to Twitter Moments and grab the Twitter Moments URL like I've done right here, then come on back to your editor and just paste it in there. It automatically replaces that URL with that Twitter moments. Let me go ahead and publish that and I'll show you what it looks like. And then view post. And you can see this is that Twitter moments. Pretty awesome. Just by grabbing the URL and putting it in your editor. Now a couple of other changes or additions to version 4.5 deals with comment moderation. Some enhancements to the email notification messages that you receive whenever a comment is created on your site and is awaiting moderation. So of course, if you have all your comments turned off, then you're not gonna get this or really care much about this particular addition or change. But if you do, then you're gonna notice some pretty cool changes in those emails you're gonna be getting. And the last item I'm gonna to touch on is that with version 4.5 of WordPress, it's doing a much better and faster job of compressing image files while not degrading the quality. And the end result of that is it's going to make your image heavy posts and pages load even faster. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this video on what's new in WordPress version 4.5. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. So far, we've covered WordPress installation using a couple of different manual methods. That was the FTP and the file manager within our cPanel control panel. This video is going to show you how to use what is commonly called the one-click install method. And yeah, it does actually take more than just a single click of your mouse to install WordPress using this method. But using these quick install applications are the fastest way to install a WordPress site. Now, even though it is pretty easy to use, there are still a couple of things to be aware of when installing WordPress this way. Now, if you're using cPanel, go ahead and scroll down until you come to a box titled software and services. Now inside of this box you're going to see these different icons and application names. What you're looking for is one that says either Softaculous, Quick Install, Simple Scripts, Installatron, or even Fantastical Deluxe. That's the blue smiley face thing. Now if you have multiple options, which I don't, but if you have multiple options, chances are one of them is going to be that blue smiley face or Fantastical Deluxe. I would not use that one just because the other option available to you is probably going to be better. Just my two cents worth there. As a matter of fact, it's not just my two cents worth because they are phasing out Fantastical Deluxe from new cPanel installations. So that should tell you something. Okay, that said, go ahead and open up your application. And the basics of these different applications are going to be primarily the same. But at this point, we want to click on Install after you've navigated to WordPress. Now at this point I'm on the WordPress page and it tells me a little bit more about the product but I want to go ahead and click on install here to begin the install process and they figure that you want your installation to take place in a subdirectory so in order to get to your WordPress site you'll have to type in your domain name slash WP. I don't want that so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. This way my WordPress installation will be accessible by just typing in the domain name. That's called putting it in the root directory. 
Now, if you wanted your WordPress site to be on a subdirectory like maybe WP as they had it, or blog, or members, then make sure you type that name in here. And as it says here, make sure that that folder or directory currently does not exist. WordPress will automatically create that for you. And unlike the previous installation processes we've gone through, WordPress will automatically create the database for us as well. So we don't have to worry about that. Speaking of databases, we can change the database table prefix right here if we want. I'm going to leave that for another video. Site settings, you can go ahead and add your site name and site description right here. But I'm going to save this for another video as well whenever I show you how to go through and set up stuff from the admin area inside of our newly created WordPress site. You also have the ability to enable the multi-site feature right here by checking that box. And the important box, admin account. You want to make sure that you put in a secure username, anything but admin. I don't even know why they put that in there. That's a major security risk. And for the password, you definitely don't want to stick with the default they have in there. You can click on the key icon over here to the right to generate a fairly strong password. And if you want to increase this, just add more characters. And then you want to copy and paste both of these items into a text document. And I've got one right here. Let's go ahead and copy this and paste it right there. And I've covered this in previous videos, so if you want to learn more about this, check those out. Now then, for the admin email, you want to make sure that whatever email address you put in here is one that you have access to. And yeah, it can be a Gmail or Yahoo or a Hotmail account if you want, but it just looks more professional if you have an email address in here that is actually related to the site domain. Now, I don't have one titled admin, but I do have one titled support. And scroll on down. I'm going to keep the language at English. I'm also going to check this box here to automatically install this plugin titled Limit Login Attempts. You can read more about it here. Basically, it's an added security measure to keep people from trying to break into your site by just guessing at your password over and over again. Then under Advanced Options, go ahead and open that up. You can change out the database name if you want. You have the ability here, if you check these boxes, to disable update notifications, to automatically upgrade your core, and to automatically upgrade plugins and themes whenever those updates are made available. I myself suggest against this. They are very convenient to have, but they can also come with their own problems too. As far as the backup, I myself choose once a week. That's based on the amount of new content that I put on my site. If you rarely put new content, then maybe once a month or even don't back up at all and just do it manually every six months or whenever you feel like it. I go with once a week and as far as a backup rotation, I'm going to go with four. So whenever the fifth backup takes place, the oldest backup that's stored is automatically deleted. So I have the four freshest backups. And if we come on down here, you can actually choose a custom theme that will automatically be installed and put in place during the installation process of our WordPress site. I'm going to leave that alone for the time being. I'll cover that in an upcoming video. And you can also put in here the email address that you want the installation details to be sent to, like login credentials, for example. I'm going to leave that blank and just click on Install. And we are done. Here's our new site. See, it opens up in a new tab. And it goes by the default 2015 theme. And click on this to go to our login page. And if we paste in our login credentials that we just created a second ago, click on login, it brings us to our admin area. And that's it. See how easy that was? Now, while I think it is important to at least know how to manually install WordPress so that you are more familiar with some of the moving parts of the program, if you have access to one of these one-click wonders, use it and you will save loads of time. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this video on using one of the quick install applications to easily install WordPress. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. Now that we have WordPress installed on our server, it's time to get familiar with the backend or admin area of our WordPress site. And to get to our dashboard area or admin area, you need to enter your domain name followed by wp-admin 
into the address bar of your browser. And if you have not logged in recently, you'll be presented with a login page asking for your username and your password. And if you recall in the previous video where we installed and activated that security plugin called Limit Login Attempts, don't freak out whenever the first time you log in or go to your login page, you see that error message pop up saying you've got three more tries left. Well, that's a result of that security plugin. Just enter your username and your password and you'll be just fine. And by the way, that is completely customizable and we're going to cover that in an upcoming video when we get to the settings tab over here in our administrator menu in the sidebar. But once you log in, more times than not, you'll be brought directly to the dashboard page. So let's go ahead and start our tour here. On the dashboard page, you're going to see various widgets or boxes that are completely customizable in that you can left click, hold and drag the title bar and move that box around wherever you want. You can display or hide the contents of that box by clicking on the drop down arrow in the far right edge of that title bar. Like for example, on activity, just hit that drop down and any recent activity taking place on your site will be displayed here. And of course, you'll see more and more of that taking place as you work more and more within your WordPress site. Likewise with at a glance, what's happening in the world of WordPress. And the quick draft option comes in pretty handy whenever you have an idea only lacking time to follow through with that complete idea and making a complete post. Just open up the quick draft option, give it a quick title and jot down your ideas here. And then when you do have the time, come on back in to your admin area, come over to post, click on all post, and that draft is going to show up there as a draft. Then you just click on that, open it up, and finish your thoughts and complete that post. But along with the quick draft, any of these other items here can be removed completely by coming up here to the Screen Options tab. Just hit that drop down, and you can simply untick the box that you are no longer wanting that particular widget or box on your dashboard page. Likewise with the Welcome section here, which, by the way, gives you links to various parts of your site like if you want to create an about page, you want to customize your site. These are just quick links that can, as it says here, get you started because each one of these items here can be found over here in our main admin sidebar. And we're going to cover each one of these items in an individual video. So you'll learn more about each one of these items when we get to that particular video. Now, in addition to the screen options tab up here in the far right corner, you also have this help drop down. You can click on that. You'll see various items related to that particular page that you're on, in this case, the dashboard page. And this changes depending upon what page you are actually on. And up along the top here, we've got the administrator toolbar, which gives you links to various items throughout your site and at WordPress itself. And you can monitor and manage the comments sections here. As you can see, right now there are zero comments, but if there are any comments that require your attention, that number will be shown here. And here, if we hover over the new link next to the plus sign, you can actually create a new post, add new media, new page, and new users. Over to the far right of the admin toolbar, you'll have your username, which when you hover over that, you'll get this drop down where you can go in and edit your profile, log out of the admin area of your site, and you can also see your gravatar or the image associated with your username. And you can adjust that or customize your avatar or gravatar in the settings section, which again, we're going to cover in an upcoming video. Now over here on the admin sidebar, each one of these links is kind of an easy access to that part of your WordPress site. And as you hover over these main items, like for example, post, you get this flyout menu that contains sub menus of that main item where you can access your all post page. You can go to the editor to create a new post. Likewise with managing and adding categories and tags. The media is where you can access your media library and manage all the items within your media library, which includes images, videos, audios, and so on. And pages, similar to posts, where you can check out all the pages that are on your site and add additional pages. The comments link will take you to the comments page where you can monitor and manage all the comments. Appearances and plugins allows you to adjust the functionality and look of your site by under appearance, adding and managing themes, customizing those themes, adding and managing widgets, menus, header images, 
background look, and if you want to peek under the hood, you can actually fiddle around with the source code of your WordPress site, enter at your own risk. And if you don't know what you're doing, I'd avoid this link for the time being. And under plugins, this is where you can go in and check out the installed plugins, add additional plugins, and fiddle around with the code of those plugins. And under users, you can check out your profile, go in and change your password, and that kind of stuff. You can add additional users, as well as monitoring all the users on your site. Tools, you can check out the available tools, import and export content into and out of your site. And under settings, you're able to adjust a lot of the major parts of your site, as well as some plugins that are added and activated to your site. The settings for those plugins will be available here under the settings tab. You can also collapse this menu for more workspace or expand it if you want to actually see what's going on here in the menu. And that's going to bring us to the end of our tour of the dashboard and other areas of the admin section on our WordPress site. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. Whenever you first install WordPress and start poking around checking out your new website, you're going to see that it came installed with what I call placeholders. Things like a sample post and a sample comment associated with that sample post, a sample page, and so on. And these items should be cleaned out. You know, they're kind of like those pictures that come in the picture frame that you buy, you know, to kind of show you what the picture frame would look like with a picture in it. And hopefully the first thing you do whenever you get home with that new picture frame is you replace that placeholder picture with your own picture. Well, the same goes with the placeholder items in our WordPress site. And that's what we're going to be covering in this video. So let's go ahead and get started and log into our admin area, which I've already done here. And just to kind of recap that, you get to your admin area, or in this case, dashboard, by putting wp-admin at the end of your domain name up here in the address bar of your browser. And if you've logged in recently, then you'll come automatically to this page. If not, you'll be presented with that login screen where you have to enter your username and your password. Hit enter, and then you'll be brought to this page. So let's go ahead and check out that sample post. Go ahead and click on post. And in this example, we're gonna go ahead and just trash the sample post. And along with that deleting of the sample post, our comment associated with that sample post will also automatically be deleted. If you wanted to delete the comment individually, you just come on down here to the comments and either select that under bulk actions, click on move to trash, or if you hover over the actual comment, you have these options here where you can reply, quick edit, edit, spam, or trash it here. So in either case, either individually by going to the comments or kind of a combo deal, and I'm all for saving time, we'll just do that deletion of the comment along with the deletion of our sample post. Just click on trash and it's moved up here to the trash bin. Head on down to our sample page and do the same thing there. Click on trash and it's gone as well. Come on down. Oh, and by the way, if you just check out the comments section here, you can see there's no comments in there because again, it was deleted along with our sample post. Let's come on down to Appearance. That's where our default themes are installed. And since we're only going to be able to have one theme at a time being shown to our visitors, there's no reason to have all these themes in here. I know some people will have 15 or 20 different themes installed on their site, which is okay, I guess. It's just you're asking your site to do a whole lot of extra work that it doesn't have to. And each one of those themes will need to be updated each time there's a change. And since WordPress makes it so easy to install and activate a new theme, why not go ahead and just have the one theme that you're using at the time installed on your site. And when you decide, hey, it's time for a change, then go in and install that new theme and activate it. That way you only have one theme in your site. That one theme is the only theme that has to be updated when the time comes. You don't have to worry about bugs associated with any other themes in your site because you only have the one. That said, let's go ahead and delete the themes we're not going to be using. And you'll see here as you hover over these icons here for these themes, you don't have a delete button here. You get to the delete button by just clicking on the icon that brings you to this page here. And down in the lower right corner is the delete button. Then click on OK to delete it. And it's gone. Do the same thing with the other theme. Just click on for theme details, lower right corner, click on delete, pop-up button, click on OK. And now we've cleaned out all of our un 
used themes. We only have the one in there right now. Good deal. Do the same thing with plugins. Click on the plugins link over here in the sidebar and the limit login attempts plugin was automatically installed and activated during our installation process. But if you only installed using the manual method that we covered in an earlier video, then you won't see this plugin on here. You only see these two plugins. These come, these two plugins come automatically installed, not activated, but automatically installed on any installation of WordPress, be it the one click installation or the manual installation. The Akismet plugin is to help minimize or eliminate comment spam or trackback spam. So I'm going to go ahead and delete both Akismet and Hello Dolly. Hello Dolly is basically just a plugin that I've never really used, never really looked at it actually. I just keep deleting it. So we're going to go ahead and select these and delete them under bulk actions. Click on delete, then click on apply, and then click on yes, delete these files. Now, if you want to use a Kismet or keep Hello Dolly, you're more than welcome to. No harm in keeping those, but you really should only have activated plugins that you're using in the plugin area. If you're not using a plugin, get rid of it. And that's pretty much it for the admin area of our WordPress site. The last things I want to clean out of our WordPress installation require us to access the files either through our file manager within cPanel or your FTP client. I'm going to be showing you this through the file manager of our cPanel control panel. I've already logged into my control panel here. Come on down here and click on file manager. And again, you can do the same thing by using your FTP client. But log into the root directory of your WordPress installation and you're going to see a file that says license.txt. I'm going to go ahead and select that. You're going to also see another file titled readme.html. I'm going to hold the control key down on my keyboard and select that one. That way it selects multiple files at the same time. And you may also see a wp-config-sample.php file. Not the config.php file, the one that says config-sample. I'm going to select that one also by holding down the control key on my keyboard and selecting that one. These three files are dead weight. There's no reason to have them, so I'm going to delete them. Kind of the same idea behind the extra plugins and the extra themes. Dead weight, you're not using them, get rid of them. One last item under the WP admin directory or folder. Open that up and scroll down a bit until you come to the install helper and the install.php files. Neither one of these are needed anymore because, hey, it's already installed. So select both of those, come on up here and delete them. And we're done with file manager. And actually we're done with our cleanup process. That's gonna bring us to the end of this video on cleaning up the placeholder items that come with the new WordPress install. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. In the previous videos, we've installed WordPress and then we cleaned things up a bit. And in this and the next several videos, we're going to cover the settings section over here in the left sidebar menu within your admin area. So let's go ahead and begin with the general tab of the settings section. Now, if we were to go ahead and click on the settings link here, that automatically brings us to the general tab. And as you see, it also puts all those flyout menus below the settings or the main section of this area. And by the way, many plugin developers will make it so that the settings of their plugin will appear here, just like the settings for the Limit Login Attempts plugin that was installed during our one-click installation of our WordPress site. So you'll see this part of your admin area change as you increase the functionality of your site by adding more plugins. But for the time being, we're going to go ahead and cover General. Now here in the general settings panel, you're going to see some things that look kind of familiar that were set up during our installation process, such as the site title and tagline. And I told you during those videos that we weren't going to mess with them then because there is another area within our WordPress site that we can adjust those. And here we are. Now these are not being chiseled into stone, so if you find the need to change your tagline at some point in the future, just come on back here and do that. And for the time being, and my lack of imagination, this is what I'm going to put in for my site title and tagline. Now the next two items here, WordPress address URL and the site address URL, you really shouldn't mess with these unless you want to break your website. That's kind of my backhanded way of saying don't mess with these. Now 
for the advanced users, there are times whenever you might want to make an adjustment here on your site URL. And you can learn more about that by clicking on this link here. But for the time being, just leave these alone. And another item that was set up during our installation process was the email address. And it gives you an example here as to when this does come into play. So as I said earlier, make sure the email address that's in this box is one that you monitor on a regular basis. Now, the next two items are pretty important as well, membership and new user default role. If you do decide to allow people to register to gain access to content, then you wanna check this box here. And if we click the down arrow, you'll see that you've got these different roles. And these different roles have various strengths in accessing your site. In other words, the subscriber can only read the content, whereas the administrator has the ability to add other users and delete other users. So if you make the default user role administrator, then any stranger can come up, register for your site, come in and delete your access. So obviously having administrator as a default role is not a good thing. And you can always come in and adjust the user roles on an individual basis after they've signed up as a subscriber. So keep that in mind. And myself, I never check this box. If I want my site to be a membership style site, then I will add additional plugins and make adjustments on those plugins. Because usually those plugins are gonna be much stronger and secure and way more flexible than what's offered here. But at least now you know what these are for. Time zone, date format, time format, and week starts on. These are all ways in which you can set the time and date of your site. Now these are pretty self-explanatory. For example, to set your time zone, you set the drop down arrow here. And if you know the UTC, then go ahead and select that. Or if you're not familiar with what UTC is, then you can just scroll up a little bit and then find the actual location that's closest to you. For example, I'm in Missouri and the closest one for me is America, Chicago, because there isn't anything in here for Kansas City or St. Louis, which is actually closest to me, but Chicago is still in the same time zone as I am, so that's what I would select, and the date format, however you want things to show up, and the time format, likewise, and when do you want your week to start? I'm kind of old-fashioned, I guess, so my week starts on a Sunday, and as we shown earlier in the setup process, where we actually selected our language at that point, you can make that change here if you find the need to. And whatever adjustments you make here are not going to stick unless you click on Save Changes. And as you see, settings have been saved. And that's the end of this video on the General tab of the Settings section of your WordPress site's Admin section. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. The next item in our Settings section of our Admin's sidebar menu is the Writings Settings panel. Go ahead and click on this link. You can define the default post category. And right now we've not messed with our categories over here in our post section, because here's where you can, and we'll cover that in a later video, but here's where you can create additional categories to group your various posts in. And once you do that, you can just hit this drop down box here and select which one of those categories you're gonna be posting to the most and use that as your default post category. Likewise with the post format. By default, you have these various formats and you can just pick the one that you wanna choose as your default post format. Now on both of these, the format and the category, you can change those on a post by post basis. These are just the defaults. So if we come over here to post and go to like add new post, over here on the right, you can see where you can select from the different types of formats and the different types of categories. And again, right now we only have the uncategorized category, but you can also create a new category right here and select that. So you're not limited to just what you decide on here in the default sections. And next up we have post via email. Not something that I'm gonna go into great detail about, except to say that WordPress has said for over a year now that they're going to be removing this feature from the WordPress installation. Matter of fact, if we head over to codex.wordpress.org slash post to your blog using email, they're gonna tell you right here that the built-in WordPress functionality is deprecated, meaning it's nothing they're messing with anymore and will be removed in an upcoming release. Again, this has been over a year that I'm aware of. So I don't know what upcoming release they're referring to, but it's 
been a long time. Now, they do suggest, however, some options to use this feature, just not the one that's built into WordPress. My suggestion is skip the first two options because this one, the email plugin, has not been updated since 2013. This option here is a built-in feature into the Jetpack group of plugins. I'm just not a fan of Jetpack and that's my personal preference, so I'm gonna suggest against this one, but if you do use Jetpack, go ahead and check that feature out. It's already built in. You've already got it installed on your WordPress site. So go ahead and check it out. This one, however, is the one I would suggest. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do a video on this to demonstrate how to use the post via email feature, just not the one that's built into WordPress, but this Posty plugin, this was last updated yesterday as of the recording of this video. And you can get there by going to wordpress.org slash plugins slash Posty. So next up, we've got update services. This has a good and a bad side. Good side is that every time that you publish and update your posts, this sends out a notice to all of those update services out there, and there's a whole bunch of them, I mean hundreds of them, that, hey, we've got some new content hitting the web, go check it out. Now, while Pingomatic is a great service by itself, like I said, there are literally hundreds of other services out there, and the main purpose behind this update service option is to generate traffic to your site. Whenever you publish or update a post, again, this sends out a notice to everybody out there that, hey, we got some new content here, come check it out. And in theory, the more update services you have listed in this box, the more traffic that you will generate to your site. Well, like I said, that's theory though. But if you wanna learn more about that, then you can check out this link here for update services. Now, the downside to the update services option is that by default, WordPress sends out this ping or notification to all these services you have in here, not only whenever you publish a new post, but whenever you update a new post. So if within a matter of 10 or 15 minutes, you, like me, may find a new image to add to that post or find a typo or a new link or whatever, you go to add it, update it, boom, WordPress automatically sends out that notice again. And those services come check out your post and find that it's the same thing. Very quickly, they will label you as a, what's called a ping spammer. Not a good thing. Quickly blacklist you, take you off of their list. And that's just, again, not a good thing. So how can you prevent that? Well, there are a couple of plugins out there. One, probably the best one, is called WordPress Ping Optimizer. Just head on over to wordpress.org slash plugins slash WordPress Ping Optimizer. Don't forget the dashes in there. And they've got instructions on installing and activating and how to use this. So by all means, check that out. So that's the update services, the good and the bad. Now, one thing I do wanna mention though is that whenever we were installing our WordPress site, there was one option to prevent search engines from indexing your site until you're ready. Well, if you did what I suggested you to do, then you're not gonna see this option. You're not gonna see the update services because if you don't want the search engines to see your site, you definitely don't want other update services to see your site until you're ready. So if you come over here to the reading panel, which by the way, I'm gonna cover in the next video, and to demonstrate what I'm referring to, go ahead and check that box there. Come on back to writing. And you can see that the update services looks like this. So if yours looks like this, that's because you unchecked that box like I told you to whenever you're installing WordPress to discourage the search engines from checking out your site until you're ready for them to. So at that point, whenever you are ready for the search engines in the entire world to see your post, then you can go ahead and click this link here. That'll take you back to the reading panel uncheck that box, click on save changes, head on back over to writing, and then adjust this however you want. And of course, add the plugin and all that other kind of good stuff. And that's it. And that'll bring us to the end of this video on the writing panel of our settings section. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. The next section of our settings panel is reading. Now, there are only a few items on this page, but they're important to know about. As a matter of fact, one of the items is missing because we deleted that sample page that came installed with our new WordPress installation. So let's head on over to Pages real quick and create a new tester page just to show you that additional feature in our Readings section. And we'll cover all this stuff in more detail whenever we get 
to the video on creating pages. Okay, now we've got our page created, or we have a page created. Come on back to settings and reading. And now we have this feature that pops up that allows us to change how our front page looks. Whether it's going to be displaying by default our latest post, like a blog page, or if we want to make that page a static page. And if you want to make it a static page, and you can find out more about what that is by clicking this link here, but we simply select this radio button. And then once we do that, from all of the pages that we have created right now, which is only that one, we can select which one of those from this drop down section that we want to be our home page or our static front page. I use this a lot whenever I'm creating a sales page on one of my membership sites. I'll make that sales page the static front page. And if I am going to have a set of blog posts, then I'll go ahead and create another page and title it blog or check this out or something to that effect and then select that as my post page. And the blog post will then be displayed in chronological order on this page from the newest post at the very top to the oldest post at the very bottom. And this leads me into the next item here on our reading settings page. And that is the blog pages show at most this number of posts. And by default, it's set at 10. And it would take a lot longer for your page to load for your visitors the larger this number is. And there's more items in speeding up the load time of your WordPress site that we'll cover in an upcoming video. But this is one of those items that will affect the load time. So one thing you might consider doing, especially if you have a lot of images and long posts, you might want to knock this back to maybe three or five. And at the bottom of your blog post page, there will be clickable links that will direct your visitors to additional posts, be it older or newer posts. This just affects what's going to be showing on the blog post page every time that it's loaded up. Now these next two items here will affect the RSS feeds and how they show in your visitors' readers. And if you're not sure what a RSS feed is, then you can head on over to codex.wordpress.org slash wordpress underscore feeds to learn more about the WordPress feeds and make sure the capitalization is proper there. But you can adjust this number here. It's going to show the most recent items in the syndication feed or RSS feeds. And you also are given the option to adjust the way the feed is shown, whether they're only going to get a summary and a link to click through to the full blog post or by default they're going to get the full text of that blog post in their RSS feed. There is some advantage to choosing the summary in that it can save some bandwidth but it's not a large amount and again you can learn a little bit more about this over here at the codex page related to WordPress feeds. And the last item on our readings panel page is the search engine visibility option. And we briefly touched on this in our installation videos, but you can check this box to discourage search engines from indexing this site. And as I had mentioned then, I choose to check this box or to keep the search engines from indexing my site until I'm ready, until all the pages are set, until the graphics are the way that I like, and then I come back in here, again, that's the readings panel page, and untick this box. So that tells the search engines, hey, come and get it. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that box to discourage search engines from indexing the site. Oh, and by the way, I just wanna remind you that every single page on your admin section, you can learn more about the items by checking out the help dropdown section here. And in this example, you can learn more about search engine visibility by checking this link in the help section and it tells you a little bit more about it. And like always, any adjustments you make here, be sure and click on Save Changes, otherwise you're not gonna take. And that's gonna bring us to the end of this video on the Readings panel of our Settings tab. Thanks for watching, and you have a great day. In this video, we're gonna tackle the Discussion panel within our Settings section. This is where we can control the settings concerning incoming and outgoing comments, pingbacks, trackbacks, email notifications, and the use of avatars. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now these first three items are your default settings that can be overwritten on a post-by-post -post basis, which I'll show you here in just a second. So if you have linked to other blogs in your post and you want to try and notify them of that link, 
as a kind of remote comment from you to them, then you want to check this first box. The second box here is if other blogs have done the same to you and you want to allow them to let you know they have linked to your site within their blogs, then you want to check the second box. Now, of course, this means that they would have to do the same with this second box on their post for you to successfully attempt to notify them, which is what we're talking about here in this first box. Hopefully that made sense. And this box here needs to be checked by default if you want to allow your site visitors to leave comments. Now remember, these are all default settings. So let's head over to the post editor so I can show you how to overwrite them whenever you want to. Now, of course, you can have all of these unchecked as your default setting. And then within your post editor, let's do that now, go to add new post. Could also do the same thing up here. And you want to make sure that in the screen options tab up here in the top right, if you open that up, you want to make sure that the box title discussion is checked. Otherwise, these guys aren't going to show up down here below the editor window. Let's head back over to the settings real quick here under discussion. I'll open that up in a new tab. As you can see, since these are checked by default, these are checked as well. If you have the default settings for these as unchecked or not allowing, come on down here and click on save. Then if we refresh this, you'll see that these are by default unchecked. So this is where you would go to overwrite the default settings you had set up in the discussions panel of your settings section. Just make sure that up here, the screen options is open, the discussion box is checked, otherwise you're not gonna show up down here below the editor window. Let's head on back over to our discussion panel, and we're gonna go ahead and leave these guys checked here for our default settings. Now, if you wanna learn more about pingbacks and trackbacks, then you can head on over here to make.wordpress.org slash support slash user manual. Don't forget the dashes in there. Slash building your WordPress community. Again, don't forget the dashes. Slash trackbacks and pingbacks. And don't forget the dashes there either. And this is going to tell you pretty much everything you need to know about trackbacks and pingbacks. Now, one thing you need to know is that whenever you allow comments, you're also showing the door to all the comment spammers out there. Whether or not they get through that door, that's pretty much up to you and your site. There are plugins that you can install and activate that will help prevent comment spam, trackback and pingback spam as well. One of those plugins comes installed by default with all of your WordPress installs, and that's Akismet. Now, Akismet is free so long as your site has no commercial intent. In other words, you're not trying to make any money off your WordPress site, whether it's through AdSense or selling stuff on your site. If you are, then Akismet is no longer free. Technically speaking, it's going to cost you money. Now, there are other plugins out there, and if we head over to wordpress.org slash plugin slash tag slash comment dash spam, this will show you a lot of the different anti-spam plugins that can be found in the WordPress plugin repository. And one of the better ones, in my opinion, is this one right here in the top left corner, WP-Spam Shield Anti-Spam. One thing I want to point out here is that this was last updated 17 hours ago. And if we scroll down, whenever we get to Akismet, this was last updated two months ago. Yeah, there's a lot more installations. That's because it comes as a default installation with every single WordPress install. So this number here is a bit skewed, if you ask me. So if your blog or WordPress site is simply for personal purposes, a Kismet will work just fine. Otherwise, you might want to consider WP-Spam Shield. Okay, so that's that. Moving on. Other comment settings where you can require the comment author to fill out their name and email, which is a good thing as well as other items that determine how the comments can be displayed on your site. And in this section here, you can toggle on or off these options to where you will be emailed when anybody posts a comment or if a comment is held for moderation. And by the way, that email they're going to send those to is that email address that you had set up earlier that I keep harping on needs to be an email address that you monitor on a regular basis. One more reason why you got to put a good email address in there. And you can also make it to where each comment has to be manually approved or is automatically approved. Now, these next two boxes are pretty important as well. This one will help you weed out possible spam. 
if the comment contains a certain number of links, and you can adjust that with the up down arrow here, or if the comment contains certain words or IP addresses, and be aware that the words you would put into this box here may also match other words, so be careful of that. But this will automatically trigger that comment to be held for moderation, no matter what you have set up here. Now taking this a step further in the comment blacklist box, similar to the trigger words you can put in here, if you put those words in here, or names, or URLs, or even email addresses, these trigger words will send that comment automatically to spam. No moderation whatsoever, you won't even know about it. And lastly, you can choose to display avatars next to the comments of the people that left that comment. You can also allow or disallow avatar images based on a rating system and even display a particular default avatar if the commenter does not have one associated with their email address. And as always, don't forget to press the Save Changes button if you made any changes here. And that's the end of this video on a review of the discussions panel of the settings section of our WordPress admin page. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. Next up, the media panel in our settings section. Now in the media settings panel, we're able to make adjustments to the max image sizes that WordPress creates for us each time we upload an image to our media library. Oh, and by the way, when we upload images to our media library, WordPress automatically takes that original image and creates several other images of varying sizes. And here's where we can make adjustments to those different sizes. And these are the maximum sizes, by the way. Now, these other images that are automatically created for us by WordPress will come in handy whenever WordPress needs to auto resize your post content because the viewer is on a smartphone, for example, versus a desktop monitor. And there's other reasons why WordPress will automatically create three extra images for every one image that you upload. You've got the original, then you got a thumbnail size, medium size, and large size. And the media settings here allow you to make those adjustments to the max size of these three different settings. And as far as helping to keep things organized with your media file uploads, you're gonna make sure this box remains checked so that all of those files, not just images, but anything that's uploaded to your media library are organized into month and year based folders. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I've logged into the file manager of one of my sites and in the wp-content folder, there's another folder or directory called uploads. And if we open that up, you can see that there is a folder for each year. And within that folder, there are folders for each month of that year. And it's inside of these folders that you're gonna find the images and other media items that were uploaded to your media library during that month's time. And that's it. Any adjustments that you make here, go ahead and click on Save Changes. And that's gonna bring us to the end of this video on the Media Settings panel within our Settings section. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. This video is gonna show you the Permalink Settings panel in your Settings section. Let's go ahead and click on Permalinks. And in the hopes of keeping this video as simple and as short as possible, because permalinks can be rather confusing, just know that permalinks determine how the URL of that post or page is going to show up in the browser's address bar. And by default, in most cases, WordPress is going to have it set to where the URL of that post or page is going to look just like this, where it's going to have your domain name, then a question mark, and then a letter equals and then a number. That number is going to represent the page number or post number, and that's neither user-friendly for humans or user-friendly for search engines. What's better is if more of a description of that post or page within that URL. Like, for example, any of these other ones, day and name, where the URL will show the date of that post and the name of that post. That is both friendly to humans and search engines. Search engines can more easily rank this because they have a better idea as to what this post is about because of the name. The most popular of these is the post name where it simply gives the domain name slash the name of the post. 
Let me give you an example of a custom structure here and you can find out more about these different tags by coming up here and clicking on the link titled number of tags are available. I'm going to open that in a new tab and this is dealing with the permalinks here in the codex of wordpress.org. If we come on down here a little bit you can see that you have a list of them and an explanation of each of those different tags that you can use in your custom structure. Just make sure that you include the percentage sign both in front of and behind that particular tag, just like I've done here. And I went ahead and rescued that sample post from our trash bin just to show you what its URL looks like based on that custom structure. Index.php, index.php, slash year, slash month number, day, and post name. Year, month number, day, and post name. And this is much more user friendly. I can get a better idea as to what this is about than if this were to simply have the domain name slash question mark, couple of numbers, and a couple of letters. And again, the most common one of these is simply the post name. You just select that radio button to the left of post name. Come on down here and click on save changes. Now, the optional section here deals with the archive pages and how you can kind of customize URLs for those pages. By default, the URL would have the words category or tag in them, but you can change those by entering your replacement word here in the category base box or the tag base box. For example, if I were to enter the word subject here in the category base box, the word subject would replace the word category in that URL to the archive pages dealing with the categories. Likewise, if I were to enter the word group in the tag base box, the word group would replace the word tag in that URL dealing with the tag related archive pages. And of course, as it says here, if you leave these boxes blank, then the word category and the word tag would be in those URLs. And just another way in which you can make the URLs to certain pages of your site even more user friendly to both search engines and to humans. And of course, as always, be sure to click on save changes if you want any changes you've made here to stick. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on the permalinks panel within your settings section. Thanks for watching and you have a great day. And the last item I want to cover in our settings section is additional items that pop in here as you include or install and activate additional plugins, like the one limit login attempts plugin that we installed and activated during one of our installation videos. Many plugin developers will have their particular plugins settings accessible under the settings section. Sometimes they'll have them pop into one of these other sections here, but more times than not, you're going to see them added to the settings section. So unless they say otherwise in the plugin instructions, head on over to the settings section and you'll more than likely see it down here. So while I'm here, let's go ahead and show you the limit login attempts plugin settings page. Now the default settings here work perfectly, but myself from a more pessimistic viewpoint, I figured that if they cannot remember their username and password, and I'm talking about people that I allow to log into my site, that if they cannot remember their username or password after four retries and have not emailed me asking for some help, then my guess is they're simply trying to break into my site, in which case I penalize the heck out of them. So this is the basic breakdown here. By default, they're allowed four retries of screwing up their login attempts, at which point that fifth try they're going to be locked out for 20 minutes. And by the way, you can adjust these numbers a lot. So if you want to allow them only three tries, then change it to three. And if you want to be really kind to them and only lock them out for five minutes, then change it to five minutes. But if after all this kindness, they decide to maybe come back in six or seven or so minutes and try that again, then I would say, well, after two lockouts, because you know, hey, they've been locked out twice already and they haven't contacted me for extra help, then I'm going to penalize them for, oh, let's say 2,400 hours. And you can change this from 12 hours until the retries are reset to, oh, I don't know, 
1,200 hours, whatever you want to do here, totally up to you. Do you want to log their IP addresses? They're going to show up right down here under change options. Now then, do you want to be notified by email after so many lockouts? Then go ahead and check this box here. Now, once your site starts locking people out and you have a whole bunch of different IP addresses down here and the username that they tried to log in as, and more than likely, you're going to see a lot of times those are going to be the word admin. You're also going to see up here the number of lockouts. Now, if they are legitimate lockouts, I mean, lockouts of people that you actually gave permission to log in, only they were just too busy, for lack of a better word, to email you saying that they forgot their password or whatever and to give them some help. You can come in here and reset those lockouts. In other words, allow them permission again. You can unlock those people that have been locked out. But whatever changes you make here, just click on change options and you are good to go with those new changes. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on working with additional items that are added to your settings section. Thanks for watching and you have a great day.